If you're looking for a way to bulletproof your live show, then you need to purchase a Play Audio 12. Hey everybody, this is Will and welcome to our brand new video series where we're exploring how to create redundant rigs using interfaces from iConnectivity. Now, if you're not familiar with what a redundant rig is, essentially it's a backup plan. It's an automatic backup plan. Here's why that's super important. If you're in a live situation running tracks, what are you gonna do if your computer suddenly stops? Now for you, it may not be that big of a deal. You just restart your computer, uh, have the lead singer vamp for a little bit, uh, and then you reopen it and press play. That may work in your scenario, but I would guess it probably does not. So what if you could set up a scenario where, like I have here in the office, I have two computers running a identical Ableton Live set. So here's my main computer, here's my B computer. Now to create a fully redundant rig, I'm gonna need an audio interface for both of my computers. And then that audio interface for both of those computers is gonna to have to go into some sort of a switcher. So I'm gonna take audio from both of those computers, send it to that switcher, and that switcher is gonna do two important things. One, it's gonna make sure I can only hear audio from one computer at a time, but maybe more importantly, if this A computer stops, it's gonna automatically switch over to our B computer. And a good switcher is gonna allow you to not just do that automatically, but also allow you to manually make that switch happen. Now, on top of that, if you happen to be using a MIDI controller like I am in this situation scenario, I need some sort of way to basically start and stop both of my Ableton sessions at the same time. And then finally, if I'm running MIDI from my Ableton sessions to uh, control program changes on a keyboard, or let's say send MIDI to front of house to control a video software, then I'm gonna make sure that I have a MIDI switcher included in that setup as well. Now, I don't know about you, but all of that sounds super expensive. That's a lot of gear. And on top of that, it all sounds super heavy, like a rack full of gear that I've got to fly on and check on an airplane. But in fact, it's not. And it's all thanks to this guy right here. This is the Play Audio 12 from iConnectivity. What's great about this, again, remember I mentioned two audio interfaces. This has two connections to two separate computers. And so it's essentially two audio interfaces in one interface. Now, I've got my A computer, which is here connected uh, via USB, my B computer connected here via USB. On top of having two audio interfaces, it also has the switcher built in. So it's automatically managing the switch over from one computer to the other computer. In addition to doing it automatically, uh, it could also do a manual switch over if I wanted. So I won't show you how to do that in this video, but if I plugged uh, a pedal into the control input here, I could switch over manually. I could also switch just directly on the front panel. In addition to this, I guess I should show you as well in the interface, we have uh, 10 outputs that we can access on the back here. And then we have an additional two outputs if we use the headphone output on the front, which is great. And you'll also notice on the back here, we won't talk about that in this video, but this ethernet port that allows for RTP MIDI connectivity on the Play Audio 12. And, and that allows a lot of really cool, powerful possibilities from this interface. Now I mentioned it's a switcher. In addition to switching audio, it's also going to switch all my MIDI. So it's it's going to do really two very important things for me at least uh, as far as MIDI is concerned. When I press play it's going to send a play MIDI command to both of my computers. When I press stop it's going to stop both of my computers. But on top of that if I've got MIDI coming from my uh, both of my Ableton computers um, and I happen to switch from A to B, it's gonna continue to send MIDI from that B machine. So again, that switch that's built into this interface is not just handling audio, it's also handling MIDI. And I think one of the best features of all it's incredibly light, it's incredibly portable. So I can take and throw this in a backpack with two laptops, hit the road, um, hop on my flight, and I don't have to worry about lugging around a giant rack full of gear. So let me show you how this works. So again, here's my A machine, here is my B machine. You'll notice both of these are stopped currently at the moment. I'm gonna take my MIDI controller, and I'm gonna go ahead and press play. And you can see both of my machines, uh, playback has started on both of these. Uh, the same exact session is running on both of the computers and um, everything is working great. Now, 
when you're in a live situation, everything's great, everything works great until it doesn't. And let's say you find yourself in a situation where you're on stage, uh, everything's fantastic. You can see this green light flashing here that basically means I'm receiving a, a tone signal on my A machine. Everything goes great until suddenly this cable from your interface accidentally comes unplugged. And you'll notice a couple things on the interface. One, you'll see that it starts flashing red. That means it's automatically on scene B. And let me show you what that means. Let me jump over to computer two. You'll notice computer two is continuing to run. Uh, it's working, everything's fine. And you might think, okay, well, that's that's great. I don't understand what you're showing me. Let me show you computer A. Look what happened on computer A. It's paused, it's stuck, something went wrong. You can see at the bottom of my Ableton session, it says the audio engine is off. Please click here. Uh, to choose an audio device from Live's audio preferences. So what essentially happened there is someone tripped over a USB cable. Uh, the the Play Audio 12 automatically detected that it lost signal from computer A, and it automatically switched me over to computer B. Now, that's incredibly easy to do on the Play Audio 12 and incredibly easy to set up a redundant rig. You may be watching this and going, okay, I'm sold on this, Will, but this is very, very difficult. How do I make this happen? Well, I'm gonna show you how to do all of that in about a minute. So let me show you how we can make this happen. First thing I'm gonna do is plug my USB cable back into the Play Audio 12. So what I've done, connected one USB cable to computer A, one to computer B. I've uh, then got my handy dandy USB MIDI controller here plugged into the Play Audio 12 into my USB host port. Uh, now I'm gonna go to, let's go to computer A here. I'm gonna go to preferences and I wanna choose this as my audio interface from Ableton Live, okay? Uh, and let's press stop so we can stop this. And I'm gonna do the same thing over on my B computer. So I'm gonna go into preferences here. We'll go to audio. We've already chosen the Play Audio 12 um, and we're good to go. So audio is essentially routed from both of my machines to the Play Audio 12. Now we did that fancy um, audio switchover. How did we make that happen? Let's go to computer A and I'll show you how. So over here on this track, I've got a free plugin for my connectivity loaded in called LifeSign. Essentially what this does is it generates a sine wave uh, that continues to go even when Ableton Live is stopped. And what I did is basically take this sine wave and route this to output 13. And by doing that, what you'll see is on the front panel here, it's flashing green. So what that means is I've essentially armed it for failover and it's on computer A right now, okay? So that's my audio setup. That's how I've got the Play Audio 12 connected to both computers. Let me show you how I set up MIDI. So again, I've got my MIDI controller set up here. I wanna assign play and stop. So let's go into our A computer. I'm gonna go into preferences and I wanna make go to link tempo MIDI here on Ableton Live. I wanna make sure this first input here, USB 101 is enabled. And while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in MIDI map mode and let's click our play button. Now let's go to computer two. Uh, I'm gonna check my MIDI preferences here, link temp tempo MIDI. All right, and we've got remote enabled on that input. I'm gonna put it in MIDI map mode as well. So I'm gonna click uh, the play button in Ableton Live on both of these computers. And then on my MIDI controller, I'm gonna press play. And that means play has been mapped to Ableton Live. Now let's click stop on our A computer. Let's click stop on our B computer. And then let's press stop on our MIDI controller. And then finally, let's get out of MIDI map mode on both of our computers, okay? And again, I should mention, I have the same exact Ableton Live session open on both of these computers. Now, final step in making this happen, I'm gonna press play on my MIDI controller here. You'll see computer A is running, and you'll see computer B is running. Now, if I press stop, and let's press stop twice to get us back to the beginning, there's computer A, there's computer B. You'll see playback stopped on both of those computers and those computers are perfectly in sync. So if you're looking for a way to bulletproof your live show, to enhance your live show uh, by using tracks, but making sure that those tracks don't go down, then you need to purchase a Play Audio 12. You see how simple it is in this video. I essentially set up this entire thing from scratch um, and you can do the same thing very, very quickly. So if you're interested in checking out the Play Audio 12, check out the link in the description of this video to learn more about it, to view it on the iConnectivity website. And if you have any questions, make sure to reach out to support. We've included information on how to contact them in the description of this video as well. Take care, everybody. See you on the next one. Bye.